Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, Victoria here. Today I'm bringing you the first uh, vlog from Florence, Italy. As I mentioned in my Rome vlog, I was gonna take the train to Florence after spending two days in Rome and I'm gonna spend five days in Florence. As you can see, I took the train from Rome to Florence. It's a direct train, one and a half hours it takes and the sooner you buy your ticket, the cheaper it will be. On my first morning I made my way to Palazzo Vecchio because I bought tickets online and I booked my time slot at around 10. The palazzo can be found on the Piazza della Signoria which has been the political and social heart of Florence for many years and on this square you can also find the Neptune fountain which was created by Bartolomeo Amananti. Fun fact, the Neptune bears the face of Cosimo Medici I, which you can also find in the equestrian statue that is further down the square. At this time, the statue was under construction, as you can see, they took off the rider from the horse for the renovation works. That was quite fascinating to see. On the piazza you can also find the Loggia dei Lanzi, which is named after the Lancers, Cosimo Medici I's bodyguards who stayed in the Loggia. Nowadays the Loggia is a public sculpture gallery containing statues depicting ancient Greek myths. One of the well-known statues is Selinis Perseus, where Perseus is holding up Medusa's severed head. This acted as a warning to the enemies of Cosimo I, apparently. By the way, last July I was already once in Florence and I have already a travel vlog from Italy, actually three episodes from Padua, Bologna, Florence, San Gimignano, Pisa and other places, so if you're interested I'm gonna link those down in the description below. Back to the Palazzo Vecchio and Michelangelo's David, which uh, stood at the entrance of the Palazzo from its completion in 1504 until 1873, when it was moved to the Academia Gallery. I actually went to the gallery to check the original version of him, so tune in for the next episodes where this will be available to see. But this replica, which you can see in front of Palazzo Vecchio, was erected only in 1910. The first courtyard of the palazzo was designed in 1453 by Michelozzo. In the center, the putto with dolphin on top of a basin is a copy of the original by Andrea del Verrocchio from 1476. The original is now displayed in the second floor of the palace. The frescoes on the walls are vedut of the cities of the Austrian Habsburg monarchy, painted in 1565 by Giorgio Vasari himself, for the wedding celebration of Francesco de Medici I, the oldest son of Cosimo de Medici I, to the Archduchess Joanna of Austria, sister of the Emperor Maximilian II. Among the cities depicted are Graz, Innsbruck, Linz, Vienna, Bratislava, Prague and so on. So as I mentioned, I actually entered the Palazzo Vecchio. Tickets are 18 euros and 50 cents. You can get them on site, but if you want to make sure that you have uh, tickets available, then it's better to book online in advance. You can book your time slot when you want to enter directly on their webpage. Make sure to book it on their official webpage of the city of Florence or the Palazzo Vecchio itself because there are so many other places where they sell tickets which are more expensive somehow. So the first hall that you enter as you enter Palazzo Vecchio is directly to the hall of the 500 which is the most imposing chamber with a length of 52 meters, width of 23 meters and height of 18 meters. It is in fact the largest hall in Italy by, by volume. It was built in 1494 by Simone del Pollaiolo on commission of Savonarola who wanted it as a seat of the Grand Council consisting of 500 members, hence the name. On the walls are large and expensive frescoes that depict battles and military victories by Florence over Pisa and Siena. The ceiling consists of 39 panels constructed and painted by Vasari and his assistants, representing great episodes from the life of Cosimo I, the quarters of the city and the city itself. 
The palazzo was originally called the Palazzo della Signoria. If you remember, the square on which Palazzo Vecchio can be found is called Piazza della Signoria. And this was named after the Signoria of Florence, the ruling body of the Republic of Florence. However, Cosimo Medici I moved his official seat from the Medici Palazzo to here in May of 1540, signaling the security of Medici power in Florence. When Cosimo later moved again to Palazzo Pitti, he officially renamed his former palace to the Palazzo Vecchio, meaning the Old Palace, although the adjacent town square, the Piazza della Signoria, still bears the original name. Cosimo was also the one who commissioned Vasari to build an above-ground walkway, the so-called Vasari Corridor, which leads from Palazzo Vecchio through the Uffizi over the Ponte Vecchio to the Palazzo Pitti. The Palazzo Vecchio displays the death mask of Dante, which previously was believed to be the actual death mask carved directly from the face of Dante. However, recent studies suggest that the mask was probably carved later in 1483 by Pietro and Tullio Lombardo, so basically 162 years after Dante's death. The mask in uh, the palazzo was most probably done from a sculpture that used to be on his tomb in Ravenna. We are coming close to our tour in Palazzo Vecchio and there is one more room that I would like to talk about which is the whole of geographical maps. 
or the Gardaroba, which was an ambitious room that was set out to represent the known world of the 16th century through the display of a collection of artifacts and murals of cartography, all seen in relation to scientific instruments of time and astronomy. The Gardaroba is one of the earliest examples that integrates cartography into its decorative elements. Garderoba, the word itself, translates to a type of storage space or wardrobe and its purpose was to house a collection. Wazari was instructed to create a space for some of the more precious items in the Medici collection. For various reasons, however, it was not seen to completion. Each of the doors was to be decorated with an up-to-date map of a particular region. Each map mural, of which there were to be 57 in total, was painted directly onto the cabinet doors. 53 of these murals also remain today. The rest of my day, which was a Saturday, by the way, was pretty open. So I spent a lot of my time just walking on the streets of Florence and exploring and admiring everything I saw finding a little interesting stores, the buildings, ad admiring the architecture, going into little cafes for a coffee, a cappuccino or an, or an espresso. What they say is that you should never order cappuccino after lunchtime. After that, it's only espresso time in Italy. <laughs> and yeah, that's one of the best things I recommend you to do in Florence, is just to get lost in the streets of Florence look at all the little details that you can find the streets are full with interesting things art pieces architecture but also people watching can be interesting and the doors of florence i mean those are also beautiful and you can just get lost and enjoy the day and as i mentioned the weather when i was in italy was perfect it was between 15 to 25 celsius degrees depending on the time of the day which is the best weather for a city visit not like the last time when i was there in july when it was almost 40 celsius degrees and we were boiling and the truth is, yes, Florence is very busy. There are many tourists here. So if you want to avoid tourists, maybe it's just not the best place to visit. One trick is to go and look at the places from the outside early in the morning. I must warn you though, if you want to take nice photos or videos, uh, the morning is maybe not the best time because the lightning is not the greatest. As you can see, I have just been looking at the buildings, the pets, <laughs> the animals, <laughs> definitely a lot, and the sights throughout the day and walking a lot. I got pretty exhausted from walking so much. So if you are not able to walk a lot, then you have to kind of spread it out and maybe stay for a few days so that you can uh, visit everything one by one and take breaks in between but Florence is a city which is very walkable and since there are so many people everywhere so many tourists it is actually the most efficient way to get around uh, you can also take buses uh, to certain places which I certainly did to places which are a little bit further from where I was staying and from the city center but uh, in the city center and around the major sites, definitely walking is the best mean of transportation. One of the recommendations that I have received uh, from different travel vlogs is to go visit the other side of Arno River because that is a bit less touristy, even though there are definitely major sites there, but somehow it is less crowded maybe because of the intensity of the amount of touristic sites and their proximity to each other and so in the streets across the Arno River on the side of Palazzo Pitti that is where you can see the Florentian people the the locals <laughs> and that's where you can uh, experience a little bit less people and but the real Florence with still a lot of interesting things to see and these small stores which are on the other side they have a lot of 
art stores as well as other handcrafted things that you can purchase but also small little museums and then in the evening before going up to Piazza del Michelangelo to watch the um, sunset from there I went for dinner at this place called Boccadarno and I arrived at around 6 p.m. which is very early for dinner in Italy and this is one of my tricks to avoid um, crowds and to be make sure that I have a seat in a restaurant in my preferred restaurant instead of booking I just go there early at around the opening time I found this restaurant on Google Maps and I read the reviews and it was said to be one of the best seafood restaurants in Fro Florence which Florence is not necessarily famous for its seafood but the tropical seafood salad that I had was really good and I also had a limoncello spritz which uh, if you have not tried limoncello spritz and you think that the aperol spritz is the drink to go for Try limoncello spritz instead. I swear it's better. <laughs> and then I went up to the Piazza del Michelangelo for the sunset, but everyone else in the city must have had the same idea because it was crazy crowded and it was very difficult to get to the good spots because people were admiring the sunset and really uh, selfish and taking the places for forever not letting anyone else uh, to go there and take their photos and videos so i was not very happy the last time when i was here in july in 40 degrees <laughs> so that's the trick you have to come here in 40 degrees because no one will be here <laughs> at that time really it was empty but obviously the sunset everyone wanted to see all right with these shots i am going to say goodbye for today this was my first day in florence and the first vlog episode uh, there will be a few other episodes so hopefully you liked this video and that means that you will subscribe to my channel and will watch my next videos if you are interested in learning more about florence then definitely do so and i am looking forward to see you at my next video until then goodbye <laughs>